So there has been some videos on uh, moment of inertia and in this video I just want to look at how this can be applied in real life to an aircraft propeller. So we begin by uh, showing um, propeller data sheets and I went on to the Macaulay website and I found a data sheet for the 1L100 which is a fixed pitch composite propeller, uh, two blades and on the data sheet it gives the moment of inertia at 0.3 slugs per feet squared which when uh, i convert it it becomes 0.4 kilogram meter squared in imperial units um, also on the mt propeller website they have a five bladed uh, propeller and they say that the moment of inertia is 5.2 kilogram meter squared. So what does that mean? Well here's the two uh, blades, here's the L100, this is the MT prop, five bladed prop, and we're going to apply um, 100 newton meters to both propellers and we're going to assume that both are at rest. So torque is I alpha and We've seen that in, in previous videos. That means, uh, excuse me, alpha is equal to torque over the moment of inertia. So in this case, it's 100 newton meters divided by 0.4 kilogram meter squared. That gives me 250 radians per second squared for the small propeller. And 100 over 5.2 gives me 19.23 radians per second squared for the larger uh, propeller. Now, alpha is angular acceleration, which is the change in angular velocity with time. Uh, we said that we assume that these are at rest, initially at rest, so omega 1 is uh, at 0. And just to make the calculations easy, we're going to say that this all happened in one second. So alpha is going to be equal to uh, omega 2 in this instance. So that means after once if we applied uh, 100 newton meters after one second uh, in this example the um, angular velocity of this propeller will be 250 radians per second or 2387 revs per minute and for the larger propeller it will be 19.23 radians per second are 184 revs per minute. So there's a big difference. We, we apply the same torque and this one gets up to a, a higher speed much quicker than uh, than this than this propeller. And that's all due to this moment of inertia. Similarly for for de accelerating or decelerating um, this propeller would slow down a lot quicker than than this propeller. <clears throat> now, assume we have a, 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 an aircraft and it has um, the power lever is at the halfway point and we're going to assume that this is 100 kilowatts of power. We know power is equal to torque times omega. Uh, omega, we're going to assume, is 1,500 uh, revs per minute. So omega is 157 revs per, uh, sorry, radians per second. So we can work out the torque then. So if we have half power, uh, 100 kilowatts divided by 157 is 637 newton meters. So that would be what our torque value is. Now we're going to assume, oh, sorry, uh, before we do that. Um, so the energy that the propeller has must be equal to the energy that's put into it. So um, 100 kilowatts. Uh, if we put that in in one second, um, maybe I re rephrase that. If I put in 100 kilojoules in one second, that's 100 kilowatts. So uh, if, if this is all happening in one second, <coughs> uh, we can say that 100 kilojoules is equal to half 157 radians per second times I. And from that, I can work out what the moment of inertia of this propeller is. And it's uh, 8.1 kilogram meter squared. Okay, so what happens when the 
the power lever is pushed forward. Well, when it's pushed forward, we now um, gone from half power to full power, so we've gone to 200 uh, kilowatts. So there has been a change in kinetic energy. And the change in kinetic, kinetic energy equals the half I times uh, the change in the final uh, ro rotational velocity uh, minus the initial one. So the initial one was 1,500 revs per minute, which was 157 radians per second squared. And the moment of inertia we uh, determined was 8.1. And just solving this equation, we can get that the final uh, velocity, rotational velocity is 222 radians per second, which is 2,121 revs per minute. We said we assumed that there was 200 kilowatts going in, so the torque is the power divided by um, the omega, the rotational velocity. So 200 kilowatts divided by 222 gives me uh, 900 newton meters, which is there. Now the big problem uh, with this is, uh, and this is all good, you know, it's it's all in in the in the green. But what we want to learn from this is the effect, the time taken to get from 157 to 222. Uh, radians per second affects alpha. So if the pilot had pushed the power lever forward very quickly, if it was a rapid change and we got a, <coughs> a, 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 a change in RPM very quickly, so let's assume uh, we went from uh, 157 radians per second to 222 radians per second, and let's assume you know that you know this, this power lever was slapped forward and this all happened in 0 0.5 seconds. Then alpha will be 130 radians per second squared. And if I put that into this torque equation, that 130 multiplied by 8.1 gives me 1053 newton meters, which could be somewhere up here. And that could be an over torque. So the lesson uh, from this video is uh, pilots and engineers you know need to be mindful on moving the uh, the, the power and, and condition levers uh, going from you know a low rpm to a high rpm in a, in a small period of time that affects alpha our moment of inertia is fixed so if you get a high alpha you're going to get a high torque so in, in this case you know, the torque eventually stabilized at 900 newton meters. But just for an instant, you know, when, when the power lever was, was slapped forward, the torque went up to 1053, which, which could have over-torqued the aircraft, and that, that can have uh, serious consequences.